Hello everyone, Tom Negrind here, and welcome to another The TTG Show. Now I'm a little under the weather, but besides the point, I'm feeling fine, and so today I wanted to talk about Steam and its issues with shovelware. Now if you don't know, shovelware is just a term given to games that are pretty much either asset flips or games that take the indie developers like a day or a week to make, and they just put it out on Steam, and they just keep on doing that. They're just mass producing this, you know, shovelware um, in hopes of, you know, a lot of different things coming, you know, ultimately to make as much money as possible by kind of cheating the system. It's not like they're trying to make all of these games because, you know, all of them will get a couple sales. They have alternative ways to make a ton of money uh, off of the shovelware, and it's actually an extremely bad problem because, you know, on one hand, like, say, like, Nintendo consoles, where the eShop, and you can get some indie games, but it's very heavily curated, you know, and the good side of that is every single game on the eStore or eShop on, you know, like, the Nintendo Switch and stuff is very high-quality high quality games, but on Steam, any, you know, almost anyone can make a game and put it on Steam, and it makes it very, very pro to just tons of shovelware and it's gotten you know a, you know before there was still shovelware so if someone trying to say oh shovelware used to not exist there's always been shovelware you know to an extent but it's been getting very very bad we're seeing hundreds of game come out per week and it's getting hard to see what's an actual game versus you know what's just shovelware being you know just completely put out in, in an attempt to just you know make a quick buck and Steam has been trying to stop shovelware, so I'm not trying to, you know, bash Steam and, you know, Valve in every which way, you know, saying, oh, they don't care about it. But they, they are trying, you know, first of all, they, you know, kind of changed the whole green light system and how, you know, they changed the ways of someone that's not, you know, already, you know, that has a publisher or whatnot. Um, they've changed the ways in order to hopefully stop shovelware from being as bad as it is. But there are still a like, ton of things that they could do in order to stop shovelware and a lot of things that steam does overall do just help out shovelware the number one way is just steam trading cards and a lot of people most people know what steam trading cards are now if you don't quick quick rundown is games can have trading cards and they you drop half the set of them while playing and you can either buy them from the market or trade with other people and if you get the full set you craft a badge it gives you an emoticon a background a badge and you can do that five times and you, you, there you go. And if you don't know, whenever something is sold on the market, uh, not only does Valve take a cut, but Steam, you know, their Valve takes a cut, and the developer of the game takes a cut. So say Binding of Isaac. If a Binding of Isaac trading card is sold for, say, 10 cents, you know, Valve might take a penny or two, you know, um, the admin, you know, the, the developers of Binding of Isaac might take a, a cent or two, and then the rest actually goes to whoever's selling the card. So every time a card is sold, you know, the developers make money. And so people have been using that to, you know, to definitely fund their shovelware schemes because they put out this game they drop trading cards in and a lot of people will buy the game because hey it cost the game cost 50 cents and i can get you know five trading cards that are all worth you know 15 cents and i could technically make a money if i just open it up and idle and you might be thinking oh what's wrong with people making money well the problem is is the developers are then making money off of that shovelware and it's overall just bloating steam up and the marketplace up and you know, a lot of indie devs have said that a huge chunk of money they make is from trading cards, and that's all good and fun because, you know, indie games, you know, they can, they, indie developers, they have more money, and that's good and all around. But overall, shovelware, it makes almost all of its money through trading cards. And, you know, Steam has tried to change a couple things. They've done things where, um, you know, you have to have a certain amount of people buy the game and play it before the cards even drop. But there are, you know, a lot of, you could be a lot more stricter with it and, you know, definitely maybe make it where games can't launch with trading cards. Maybe they have to do, um, s you know, certain, they have to sell a certain amount of copies. They have to, uh, you know, maybe as an example, they sell a lot of copies or they sell less amount of copies, but it's overwhelmingly positive or something along those lines. I think there should be metrics, you know, uh, for when a game can actually make trading cards rather than, hey, here's trading cards and you know, the trading cards are delayed or whatnot. But overall, trading cards are one of the biggest uh, offenders of why shovelware does so well. Um, number two is the 
the always-on-sale games, as I like to call them. They're games that, you know, they cost a, you know, a dollar or two, or, you know, sometimes even five dollars, and they always go massively on sale. Maybe uh, make it where if you're not that big of a, you know, if you haven't sold that many copies, you can't have your game be on sale a certain amount. So say, you know, I think there's like a small little indie game that's like, you know, a dollar or two, and it's called like Astro Wars or Space Wars or something, and it's just kind of like a little asteroid-like game, but everyone loves it, and it's, I see it on sale quite a lot, and there's something, to, I mean, that's still kind of abusing the sale system, I think, um, but that's, it's a quality game, you know, a lot of people really, really like it, especially for the price they get it at, so I don't see that big of a problem with it, um, you know, because of the fact that, you know, a lot of people like it, but games that, you know, these producers, they put out, or not producers, the developers, they put out a game every week, and they're constantly, you know, they're $5 and they're just constantly on sale, you know, I think there is something definitely wrong with that. And I think one way to maybe fix that would be to, if you haven't sold a certain amount of copies, yeah, you can still put your game on sale, but it's, you're going to be limited on how many times and how long your game can actually be on sale. Rather, you know, that way, a lot of the, uh, you know, shovelware games, they can't just massively always be on sale and then be at the top of the lists when you're trying to search up specials. And the number three, the, the main, another one of the big ways I feel shovelware just gets promoted directly by Steam, actually, because some of these things are people abusing Steam's uh, kind of, you know, systems and features. Ste the way Steam coupons work is is almost like Valve is directly promoting, you know, the shovelware. And as an example, I if you craft badges, one of the other things you get is you'll get a coupon for a random game. And how I've understood it from people talking on, like, the Steam forums and discussions is developers can make a certain amount of coupons for their game and put it into, I guess, the coupon system. And whenever someone crafts a badge, they can get a coupon from it. So sometimes I've heard people can get good games, like, you know, a coupon for Portal 2 or, you know, a coupon for this game or that game. But uh, I think I've heard someone say they got a, uh, a coupon for Div Divinity Original Sin, which is a very great game. But most of the time, and I craft a lot of badges mainly just because I'm kind of stupid and I just like, you know, the whole trading card badge aspect. Um, and I also really like the emoticons and badges, and, you know, whatever. I, I do it just because I do whatever. Um, but every time you do it, you get a coupon and every time I have never, I've always, I, every time I craft a badge, I look at the coupon I get and I have never once seen a game that I've actually wanted to buy. You know, I've occasionally bought, you know, for 10 cents, like a, you know, crappy shovelware game and sent it as a gag gift for my friend. And that's, that's me contrib contributing to the problem. I completely understand that. Um, try, you know, I'm definitely not doing it anymore. Um, but it is a problem, and I think the easy way to fix that is to just not have... If a game hasn't sold a certain amount of copies or it's not popular, kind of similar to the always on sale, what I was talking about, just don't let them make coupons for their game. And I understand that that might make it where, you know, not every time you get a coupon, but I overall, I think it would be better for Steam and Valve if... When you crafted a badge, you got a chance at a great coupon versus consistently getting these shovelware just games. You know, sometimes, you know, there's small indie games that might not have been discovered, but at least people kind of are enjoying the game. You know, the people that have discovered the indie game are enjoying it, but most of the time it's just shovelware. And that's what sucks about shovelware is it not only just bloats up steam and makes it very hard to find games when you're looking up things, but small little indie games that are actually quality and, you know, developers make, you know, spend a ton of time on them, they're harder to find because of the fact that Steam itself is bloated with shovelware. And, you know, overall, I really, really, really love Steam and I love having, you know, tons of indie games and I love being able to, you know, find games from these small developers and, you know, having people have the chance to have their game found. But you know, on the flip side of it, it makes it hard for, you know, say a new developer, if they're actually spending a year, they make a game, they, they really like it, and they put a lot of passion into it, and they put it on Steam, it makes it a lot harder for something like that to be found when that's one game a year by that developer, when some developers are just completely just putting out and just throwing up a game a day or a game of week, you know, on Steam. And it 
it's getting to the point where it's getting very, very bad. You know, a podcast, a lot of you guys know Total Biscuits podcast, Co-Optional podcast, they always talk about, at the end of their podcast, they all look for games, you know, they, they always say they, like, sift through all the garbage in order to find, you know, decent games. And it shouldn't be the case like that. You know, I'm not saying bad games shouldn't exist on Steam, because that's just the way it is, bad games will exist on Steam, but... To the extent that it is, that's not something I'm okay with. And I know Steam and Valve are working to fix the problem, but I think there's a lot of things that they could do to make it a lot better, a lot faster. But overall, that was just my opinion on Steam and its shovelware. Sorry, I'm a little under the weather today. My voice probably, you know, cr like cracked or something, uh, you know, a couple times. But um, I'm still, I'm feeling good. It's just my voice is not the way I want it to be. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more content and news. If you're new to my channel, um, every Wednesday I put out something that, you know, just something I want. So whether it's a review or, you know, an upcoming podcast I'm working on. And every Saturday I'll have the TCG show, which is what you're watching. Uh, and if you have any comments, or, you know, any kind of things you want to bring to the table in terms of this discussion, definitely leave a comment down below. I read them all. And like always, guys, see you next time.